welcome to a new episode of Along avec Anna podcast. Um, I think this is the seventh episode in English. We're about on episode 28 in general with the French, but I named them um, just the English ones, so I think it's the seventh. This is a knitting podcast that I record in the southwest of England where I live. My name is Anna and I'm a knitwear designer. I'm really happy to see you today. Um, it's been a while that I wanted to record a new podcast in English. Uh, a lot of people asked me, when are you going to do one? When are you going to do one? And I was like, I swear I really want to, but I've been so busy um, that, yeah, I didn't manage to find the time. However, today I'm sitting, I've got loads of things to show you. Uh, and what I was planning on, um, you know, writing down what I was going to say on the podcast and what I was going to show you, Um, I had a look at when the last time, where was the last time that I recorded an English podcast um, and I realized it was actually in May 2019, oh my god, I feel so bad, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I really thought it was, I thought it was um, about Christmas time, like Christmas 20, well December 2019 or January 2020, because that's I recorded in a French one at the uh, at that time and I was quite sure I did the English version but apparently I didn't. Um, so yeah, really sorry about that. So in a year and a half, over a year and a half, it's so many things happened. So I've got so many things to tell you. Um, I hope you're going to have a nice time. Don't hesitate to take a nice beverage. I've got my tea here um, and ready to chat to you for... A while. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if it's a bit long. So yeah, let's crack on. So many things happened within the last year and a half really, um, personal wise and then professional as well. So I don't really know where to start to be honest. There's so many things I need to tell you. Um, so since May 2019, what happened? <laughs> um, so when, uh, when I recorded the last time, I was full on working on a book um, that was going to be released in September 2019 with a French publisher called Erol. Uh, they do have quite a lot of nice craft books about knitting, sewing, embroidery, things like that. Um, and I've been working with them on this project since February 2018. Um, so the release was like 18 months after we kind of um, started talking about it. So May 2019, I was full on working on that. Um, I think we went to like the reading of the the last, um, how do you say, the last writing really before it went to print. So I've been doing that. Uh, June 2019, we went to Montreal, we went back. Uh, for those of you who follow me for a few years now, yeah, more than a few years, um, you may know that we used to live in Canada Uh, we used to live in, in Montreal, we lived there for four years, um, from 2012 to 2016. Um, and last year we decided to go back for holidays for a full two weeks with our little girl to just see our friends. Um, we were missing the city so much, so just go back to the city, um, enjoy, you know, the old habits that we had there. Um, and uh, yeah, just yeah, enjoying the life in Canada, showing to our little girl where she was born, things like that. So that was really, really lovely. Uh, we had an amazing time and yeah, we still miss it a lot, but it's quite nice to be uh, close to family when you can see them, when there's no pandemic, right? <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, we're looking forward to go back another time. Um, but yeah, so that was June, um, and in the same time I had to like reproof my book. And then the summer was like in, in France, in Brittany, uh, like often, uh, and September 2019, so uh, my book was released. So I'm going to tell you a bit about like that part of what happened in my life um, with the book and stuff, and then after I'll show you the pattern that I've been uh, working on and that I released since May last year. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I felt so bad. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you, I'll show you my book. Uh, here it is, it's here. So this is my book. So if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, um, you've probably seen it already. If you only follow me on YouTube, you haven't. 
So here is my book, ta-da! So it's called Tricoter le Jacquard en Rond. So it's about colorwork knitting. It's a book about stranded colorwork. So I go through um, like everything about stranded colorwork. Um, 11 chapters on what it is, what yarn do you uh, use to knit um, stranded colorwork, what type of needles, uh, how to choose a pattern, um, how to knit, um, the difference between stranded colour work and intarsia, um, what else? <laughs> so how to knit, how to do a stick, how to block your project, why do you block your project, things like that. And then at the end you've got five patterns um, that are made uh, like kind of for you to try stranded colour work for the first time, but you've got like more difficult patterns as well. So if you've done stranded colour work in the past and you just want to um, know a bit more, like deeper um, information about this technique and try to knit a pattern from the book, then it's for you too. So it's not just for beginners, um, it's for everyone. So that's quite nice. And uh, so yeah, you've got five patterns in it. So I'll tell you more about languages, but um, this one is in French, which was the original book. Um, we took the pictures in Iceland so we went to Iceland in March 2019 for the first time, um, just my partner, myself and our little girl, um, and we took all the pictures there. Um, so all the pictures are from our trip in Iceland, which is um, really nice. So I'll show you a couple. So here uh, we are in a Black Sand Beach um, in Vic. Here we are just on the road. Um, this is taken with our drone and it's um, in a really nice bath uh, in the middle of nowhere in the East Fjord. Um, what else? Got loads. Let me look. Look, 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 look. Here you've got um, a very nice just uh, picture as well. Um, that was, um, I can't remember where that was actually. Um, I think I was just on the road, but I can't remember exactly where it was taken. We took so many, so, so many. Uh, so this was in Vic as well. Uh, my little girl with her jumper. Uh, so the pattern is on the book, in, in the book. Um, yeah, just, oh yeah, that I love. Um, vest her horn. A very nice mountain with, um, the beach again um just this country is amazing if i don't know if you've ever been to iceland or if you are from iceland but it's just yeah it was a dream come true i wanted to go since i was probably like 17 years old um and it was just as good as i expected even better um yeah we just really really loved it and yeah wish we hope we come we're gonna be able to go back one day um and this was taken with the drone as well so you've got like kind of uh, pictures of ambience, pictures of the pattern, and then technical pictures um, that I took myself. So the entire book was made by myself and my partner. So when I'm on the picture, then it's my partner who took them. Otherwise, it's me. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really, really pleased. They really um, understood what I wanted. They let me write uh, everything that I wanted. Uh, they just yeah followed my lead really, uh, but they were there with like really good advice. Um, in the colors, they just based everything on my like kind of my color palette, um, which is amazing. And again, I had um, you know they said oh do you, do you like more like this type of design or this type of design? So I've been able to choose, which was really nice. Um, really really good experience, um, and it's been. A really big success in France, so it's uh, we are now a year um, since the release, a bit more than a year, and it's went to the fourth print, um, which means that it's like more than ten thousand books that were printed in the French uh, language. So it's it's really really good. Like I was not expecting it, so that's amazing. Um, and since then, in September twenty twenty, so a year later, it was released in. So I'm not going to pronounce it because sadly I can't speak German, so I don't want to butcher the language. Uh, but here's the title in German. 
if you want. Um, and it's it's exactly the same book. Normally, when um, another publisher is buying the rights, they are allowed to just change the format so then it fits more with their type of books. So they could change like the size of the book. They can change like the the cover if it's soft or hard. Um, yeah, the presentation inside, um, but they've kept exactly the same thing. Like, yeah, it's 100% uh, the same. The only thing that changes are like sometimes where the pictures are placed because the, um, like obviously the, the text is bigger or depending on the language, uh, but otherwise it's exactly the same book. So that's quite nice. Um, so yeah, so it's been released in German. Um, we're hopeful that one day it might be released in English. Um, so I was supposed to release the pattern individually on Ravelry, but I haven't done it yet um, because we may be able to release it in English. And if it's the case, um, obviously the publishers don't really want the pattern to be on Ravelry, um, at least just yet. Um, so that's why I kind of, um, first I didn't really have time to format all the patterns to put them online. And on top of that, I obviously, there's so many people who asked if this book was going to be translated to English. I'd rather have it translated than each pattern because the technique part is really important. Um, so I'll let you know if an, if an English version will, will come out one day or not. But for the moment, you've got the French and the German, which is already really nice. Um, so yeah, so that kind of like so last year um like autumn last year was really really busy because i had a lot of um how would you say events uh i went to so i went to paris i went to grenoble um in in france i went to uh what did i go? i went to brussels in belgium where i studied so it was really nice to go back to brussels um and then i did uh, several kind of yarn festival as well to present the book and like sign the book things like that and yeah it was really really nice um just to meet people and yeah show them my work and explain a bit more about why i've done that book um and why i think it's an, an interesting book and things like that so it was really nice Sadly, everything's kind of been stopped since March because of COVID. So we were supposed to have a yarn festival in Paris in March and then another one last weekend in Paris as well. Um, I was supposed to do um, a launch in the shop of uh, La Bien Aimée in Paris. And everything has been uh, cancelled uh, because of COVID, sadly. So um, like everything else, <laughs> so um, hopefully we'll be able to start again um yeah those kind of events because i really miss uh meeting people and you know chats about knitting and things like that um but yeah it's been a really really busy autumn and in the same time as that i'll just turn off a bit the light i think it's going to be a bit better probably uh same time as that i um got pregnant last autumn <laughs> so we had our second child in end of May um, so May 2020 another little girl uh, I already have a little girl who's called Alice who just turned five um, a couple of days ago and then we had a little Suzanne um, in May so yeah so last year I was yeah in the middle of all those events why being pregnant so it was kind of yeah difficult plus I've been really um, sick um, the first couple of months of the pregnancy so and really exhausted I couldn't even touch my needles I think I haven't knit for more than, than two months um, the first few weeks I was just so exhausted uh, and it's funny because I'm the type of person who always said like of course I'll knit even if I'm pregnant like come on I'm so addicted to it there's no way I'm not gonna knit and I didn't <laughs> like I was so so tired so sick so exhausted that i actually didn't knit either so don't feel bad if you if you are pregnant and you're too tired to knit that's normal um so yeah so it, it's been quite quite busy um and we went back so in autumn after a few of in between the few of the events we went back to iceland uh, because we loved it so much the first time 
that we decided to go back. Um, this time we didn't have book pictures to take, so it was a bit more chill. We did take a couple of pictures for patterns, but no, 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 there wasn't any pressure really for like book pictures or anything like that. It was lovely to go back, um, had a really nice time, different season as well, so it was amazing. Um, we actually got engaged, <laughs> my partner proposed to me um, in, in one of the baths. Uh, where there's no one in the middle of nowhere, no one apart from our little girl who was watching. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really unexpected, so really, really lovely. Um, I did a video uh, with our drone, a lot of the, the shots are taken with our drone, uh, so it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, I think I've done, yeah, I've done one for the first trip in Ma uh, March, and then I've done a second one in October for the second trip. So if you want to see a bit about Iceland and the difference between the two seasons that we visited, when we visited the country um, and just have like a nice kind of 10 minutes uh, get away while we all stuck at home, um, I recommend you go and watch it. I don't really talk, there's mostly music. So even if you don't understand French, you'll be fine. Uh, Cause I'm not sure I talk that much and if I do, I've put subtitles, I think. Um, but yeah, so that was that. Uh, really, really busy. Um, and then COVID hit and then I stayed at home uh, with my little girl uh, who was out of nursery and I was pregnant and then I had a baby. Um, and then, yeah, now I'm, we are in end of November. My baby's going to turn six months in a couple of days. Um, and I'm still working full time, uh, because I didn't really have, um, maternity leave considering I'm like self-employed and all that. So I've been working a lot. Uh, I'm working on a second book that will be released in September next year. I'll tell you more about that later um, another time uh, and yeah just working on patterns and yeah it's quite intense I'm not gonna lie um, it's quite hard to like look after you know your baby full time um, without any support because our family is far away while having a full-time job um, so yeah I'm often quite tired but really pleased to do both really pleased to keep my baby with, with me as long as I can and to yeah continue this job that i absolutely love i always have a like kind of a light problem because <laughs> here in england it's like changing all the time so you've got clouds no clouds clouds no clouds so sometimes it's a bit tricky with the light so i'm sorry if um it goes really bright sometimes um but yeah i'm just uh, trying to see because i've kind of wrote down everything i wanted to say um but yeah that's that's what it was um we worked so i'm so i'm anna the knitwear designer behind Anna. um so all the patterns and stuff are uh, what i create uh, but i work with a lovely lady called dorian and she's been helping me for almost two years now uh, so she's the one who does all the customer service so if you write because you've got questions about patterns then she's the one who's answering most of the time, um, she helps me with um, like tech edition of the pattern, um, like the website, so many things like that, because obviously I, I can't do it all uh, by myself. Um, and we've been working on a new website, so I don't know if you've seen, um, my old website was a bit dodgy, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't the best because it wasn't an e-commerce website. So um, it was always better to use Ravelry um it's still good to use Ravelry obviously but I really wanted to develop um the my website for people who didn't want to use Ravelry or couldn't use Ravelry for different reasons um and uh, yeah so we released the new website a couple of weeks ago it's I think it's really nice it's way easier to use um, you have an account now that you can go to, so when you buy a pattern, it's all it's always there. So it kind of dies like Ravelry. If you go back to your account, your pattern will be there. So there's no stress of like losing the pattern in your email or things like that. It's always on the website. Uh, and we developed um, translations. So I used to have like my pattern in French always, obviously, as I'm French, um, and then English always as well as yeah my other language is, is English living here and all that um, and then I started translating 
um, well, using translators to um, to translate my patterns. So we have now uh, 12 patterns in German. So I've translated the bestseller patterns. So not all of them are on it. All of them are in English. Um, if you if you want some um, that are not translated into those languages, know that they will always be in English anyway. Uh, but we've got 12 patterns in German um, and we're in the process of translating in Portuguese, Russian uh, and Danish at the moment. So Russian we've got five, Portuguese we've got three, um, Danish I haven't uploaded uh, them yet. But the idea is to have the same patterns as the German ones. So within the couple, next couple of weeks, um, you'll have all the one from in German, you'll have them as well in Portuguese, Russian, Danish, and then later on, uh, we'll do Italian and Spanish. So I'm looking for a Spanish translator. So if um, you know anyone, um, if you have anyone to recommend uh, that could do that, so it needs to be a knitter who knows how to translate and how um, who knows like the different abbreviation in Spanish and English or Spanish and French. Uh, um, most of the translator go from, from English, but it could be from French as, as well. Uh, then you can drop me an email at hello, hello at alongavecana.com. Uh, that would be really nice because that's uh, what I'm missing. I've got a translator for all the other languages um, that I mentioned, but not for Spanish yet. So. So yeah, so we've been working on translation. So if you go on the website, um, you've got patterns and then you've got English patterns with different categories, um, but then you've got as well uh, Russian patterns, German patterns, Portuguese patterns, and soon Danish patterns. So if you click on that, you will see the patterns that are in your languages, uh, in your language. So a lot of work, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the news really. Um, yeah, uh, otherwise everything's fine. Um, we've been quite lucky with COVID uh, because my partner works in um, food industry. So he hasn't been impacted. He's been working quite a lot, which was a bit difficult sometimes with, you know, the new baby and my little girl at home and stuff. But I mean, we feel so blessed that, you know, we haven't been impacted. He's in an industry that is, you know, okay with covid because everything everyone needs to eat really so he hasn't lost his job um which is not the case from a lot of our friends um so yeah wherever you are i hope everything's fine and uh, we'll we'll get there but yeah it's quite a difficult difficult time for everyone obviously but we're not going to speak about that because we're here to speak about knitting um so i'm going to show you i'm going to go through everything that i've knit and released in the last couple of months almost years um so that's quite a lot i'm really sorry i will not leave as long honestly i i, I really didn't think i left like more than a year and a half <laughs> between my my um my podcast um but yeah i'll try not to leave that long anymore um, so yeah, hope you're ready. We've got a lot of knitting. So I'm going to show you my knitting because my baby is currently napping and I don't know for how long. So <laughs> I'm kind, kind of going to try to go a bit faster to show you everything. Um, so last time I recorded, I showed you um, the Rosa cardigan uh, that I had knit. So now I'm going to show you um, my knitting. So what I've been knitting in the last couple of a month, uh, what I've been releasing. Know that you can find all my patterns on my website, alongavecana.com and Ravelry um, with my name, Anna Derhout. I'll put all the links down there. All my patterns are always in French and in English. Um, and then some of them now are in German, Portuguese, Russian, soon Danish. Um, so that will be as well on Ravelry and on my website. On my website, it's easy to find because you can find the categories. Uh, on Ravelry, I think you have to go to each pattern uh, and look for the languages. So I'll tell you in the same time which pattern are in which language. Um, so I'll start with the last one I released um, and then I'll go back in time to what I've been releasing since uh, May last year. So what I'm wearing uh, was released last 
month. It's called Silver Leaf Pattern, Silver Leaf Jumper. So it's a really uh, nice um, feminine raglan uh, jumper with lacy sleeves. So you've got like kind of balloon sleeves um, with the wrist here that is a bit tight um, and with a really nice lace detail. Um, and otherwise it's just a, a raglan, a quite easy raglan jumper. And the neckline is with um, an eye cord. So it's really nice, it's really feminine, um, but it's really easy to wear. I've put it with a little um, kind of, um, I can't remember how you call those top actually. Uh, in French we call it broderie anglaise, embroidery, hide it top um sorry <laughs> so yeah just uh under so you see a bit of it um and then yeah otherwise it's just um simple really easy to wear uh jumper but i think really nice with those um puffy and lacy sleeves i used a uh, knitting for olive yarn that i absolutely love like i discovered this brand recently i had bought the heavy merino about more than two years ago uh, oh no maybe two years ago because i think they started to do the yarn in 2018 uh, so that was at the start but i remember that i ordered from the website um with my card bank card and not my paypal and i got charged like a really ridiculous amount of fee from the bank so it wasn't um delivery fee it wasn't even conversion fee it was just like the fact that i was paying um in another um currency or something i can't remember how the bank tried to uh, explain um <laughs> kind of justify but they i think it charged me about 15 pounds or something so i was really annoyed so i kind of like stopped buying from them because of that reason because i was like oh it costs too much money to buy um but then people said oh if you use your paypal you won't have that um and then they released new yarn so uh, thin merino and then mohair um, so i bought their yarn a couple of weeks ago a couple of months ago now uh, probably around june different colors um, and yeah and i've used them and i love them like the mohair is really soft it's not itchy at all i think it's the first mohair that i try that is that soft and i've knit a lot of mohair like even from you know, hand dyed yarns, like really nice mohair, but this one is by far the less itchy. Like I wear it, I've got nothing under apart from this tank top and even straight from the start, it's not itchy. Usually it, it's a bit itchy for the first 10 minutes and then you get used to it. Um, this one, not at all. Like I'm so convinced, convinced with this yarn. It's peeling a bit on the sides, obviously, like, you know, um, working on the laptop and then carrying my baby and things like that but it kind of always peels anyway so it's not the end of the world um, really nice I love the colors um, yeah fast delivery I didn't have a problem with that conversion fee anymore I used my PayPal and it was all fine um, yeah quick delivery and yeah overall really pleased so that was released last um, last month um, and uh, yeah, I think you really liked it. Uh, what I forgot to say is that we are, today we're Monday, and from Friday the 27th to Sunday, uh, no, to Monday, sorry, the 30th of November, there's the Black Week. Um, so I'm doing minus 30% on all my patterns on Ravelry and my website with the, call, with the code Black Week. Um, so you can get all those patterns uh, starting Friday from uh, my... Um, sorry, sometimes I, blah, 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 I can't speak. You can get all these patterns from Friday to Monday with a um, minus 30% thanks to that code. Here we are, I <laughs> managed to say it. Um, yeah, there's a, a cal at the moment on my Ravelry group. So my Ravelry group is along with Anna. And then you've got two um, discussion. One is like... Um, Silver Leaf Cal, the other one is Silver Leaf Cal pictures um, and obviously there's one where we discuss and the other one where you put pictures of you, the start and the end of your knitting um, so then you can then get a price at the end um, if your name is in my bowl when I 
try to look for a winner or something. Um, we'll see what you will get. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, if you want to join us, if you want to knit this pattern, you've got a question or not, if you just want to share, you're welcome to come. Um, a lot of people are French, but you know, a lot of pe French people speak English too. I'm here. I answer questions. Um, so yeah, it would be really lovely to, to have you on this cow. Um, so yeah, silver lift jumper. And then next month, December, we've got the silver lift cardigan that will be released. So it's not released yet. Um, it will be released on the 4th of uh, December. Um, and uh, this one started to peel as well. Sorry. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh yeah. And so it leaves you time to knit the cardigan as well for the cow because the cow will stop end of um, January, 31st of January. So it still leaves you time to, you know, come and knit this uh, pattern in the cow, uh, either the jumper or the cardigan when it will be released. So that's the cardigan. So I wore it a lot the last few days on my dresses. So that's why it does peel a bit. So this color is um, dusty pink. I think it's called and this one is dusty petroleum blue i think um i've put everything all the information um on my ravelry pattern page and on my website um but yeah so it's exactly the same except i've oof, <laughs> i've made it crop um like more crop than this one obviously you can't really see because i'm not wearing it but it's like way less crop uh, actually in real life um to go on my dresses, high waist skirts, high waist jeans, things like that, and it's it's really really nice. Um, but if you wanted to just have it longer, you could lengthen it uh, without any problem. Um, you've got the eye cord as well, and you've got those puffy um, lacy sleeves. Um, and one of the new thing I've put on my website is labels. So you've got different type of labels, um, small one, uh, bigger ones. Um, this one only has like a long avec Anna on it. Um, this one here, if I can try to show you, it's got um, a long avec Anna and it's written Trico Delicat, so like delicate um, knitwear uh, in French. Um, I've got other ones. Let me show you on this jumper. This is like a larger one uh, here and it's written L'hiver sera doux. Along avec Anna, so it's like winter will be soft because it's like with my hair. So, <laughs> um, so you've got all those type of labels on my website uh, if you fancy, and uh, yeah, you can buy them uh, by pack of five or individually. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of a nice like finish to the jumper that you've knit. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. It looks like it's from. You know high street brand but it's actually handmade so i found it really nice um so yeah so that's the silver leaf cardigan so the silver leaf jumper is available in french english german uh currently being translated in portuguese danish and russian um and this one for the moment is will be available in french and english and i need to send it to the german translator and the other ones as well to see if they could um, translate it for the release. If it's a bit too tight, uh, it will arrive um, probably a few days after the release. So, so yeah, this pattern is definitely going to be available in all the languages uh, because it really, it was really, a, um, how do you say, a good bestseller. Like people really like it. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I've released that, uh, and this one will be coming, and then the other one. Uh, from this autumn that you really liked was this one it's called the laurel jumper so it's like a crop uh, stranded color work jumper uh, with like normal fitted kind of sleeves um, and it was knit in Julia Asselin um, journey sport in big colorway latte uh, and the spin cycle yarn dyed in the wool colorway the saddest place um so i love this colorway because it gives like kind of a rainbow-ish effect um so i used one skein for the body and then another skein for the sleeves and i've split my skein in two um so i basically i had my skein i made a cake so and then i realized that by the middle of the skein the color was like starting over 
so then I took my cake and I re um, wind it, bobbin it, I don't know how you say, sorry, uh, into a second cake from like the start to the middle. So then you would have one that would be like from the start to the middle and the other one from like the end to the middle. I think it was something like that. Sorry, it's a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, basically I've split it in two. Um, and this way the sleeves are kind of really similar. They're not fully the same, uh, but they follow the same color. Wait, let me show you. They kind of follow the same um, color rhythm. So it starts with kind of like so the blue, then it goes to like grey, green, then a bit of purple, and then it goes down to blue. So this one is a bit more light than this one, but I mean the general idea is the same. So it's quite a good way actually um, to try and have the same sleeves. Um, so obviously I use skin cycle, but you could use whatever type of yarn that changes colours like that. There's a lot. Um, on the market a lot way cheaper as well than skin cycle um, but I really like that effect of the skin cycle yarn I think it's a really good yarn but it's a bit pricey for some people which I totally understand so there's a lot of other option um, you could use leftovers as well of yarn you could use minis um, yeah there's so many options uh, to do the kind of effect or you could just use one contrasting color and knit this color um, for the entire jumper that's it's another another option um and you've got yeah a two by two ribbing neckline and finishes and yeah i really like it i wear it a lot um yeah it's really really an easy simple nice patterns um maybe not for your first color work but you know it's it's quite an easy motif so you don't need to um you don't need to do oh, sorry you, you just like your floats at the back will just carry itself because you don't you never have more than three stitches of the same color something like that i think it's three or five no i think it's three on this one three stitches of the same color so it kind of like the the floats are just like following at the back without having um to Merde, I can't find my word. Sorry, you know what I mean. Um, ah, sorry. Well, you, I, I think you understand what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, so that was it, and I've added, um, I've added a label as well on this one. Um, so the label is the French way, Alonga um, Vecana, because um, people often describe my work as like delicate French work. I don't know. Um, I, I've had that a lot from. Um, foreigners like people from abroad like wherever saying you've got this French style which I found really interesting because I don't really realize if I've got a French style or not so uh, that's why I've put this <laughs> this little label the French way I found it nice um, so yeah so that's the laurel jumper that I really really like too um, tuk -tuk -tuk, and then I've just released this month uh, this cardigan <laughs> that was in my I wear all my knit knitwear so that's why um, sometimes they peel a bit I suppose sometimes they're um, not on the right side when I pick them up uh, from my wardrobe because I just wear them all of them I just wear so uh, so this is the Ragnis cardigan so it's trying to show but I'm a bit a uh, bit close so it's a kind of a long cardigan uh, it's a drop shoulder um, and it's a really, really simple construction with like an eye cord uh, on the side. Up oh, here you are. Really, really simple um, construction. Easy for beginners um, with garter stitch um, at the wrist. And then, up, oh, trying to show the end. Yeah, so the bottom of the cardigan is this. So you've got like a really nice eyelet. Um, stitches, stitch here, eyelid pattern, and then garter stitch as well um, at the bottom. So it's really nice, easy um, throwing, throw on cardigan um, to wear on dresses, to wear with like a nice blouse, like I have in a pair of jeans. Um, yeah, I've knitted in the yarn 
uh, rosy base from La Maison Tricoté, so the yarn shop in um, Montreal. Uh, and it's funny because it's an iron weight yarn, but it's a mix of VFL and mohair spin together. So you only have one thread of yarn, but there's more mohair like inside so it's re it's really nice because it gives you this fluffy effect but you only have one yarn to knit with so um, really nice base um so yeah you've got like a i think it's 19 stitches gauge on this one in like 4.5 millimeter needles so it's quite a quick um quite a quick temper or uh, cardigan to knit even if it's long oh i forgot to say this one um has the same gauge 19 stitches uh, with 4.5 millimeter needles so it, it's like really soft it's not like too airy but it's still still really soft and you know really nice to wear so then because i had a baby um when i was pregnant i really wanted to create more design for babies so a really small like adult pattern I'll, I'll get into uh, in a minute, but I'm just showing you the baby ones now. Um, so here we are. Um, so yeah, I've been knitting a lot for my little girl, um, so who's five, as I said. Uh, but because I started designing when she was already um, 18 months old, so I was knitting her size two years old. Um, so I've never had the chance to actually design like proper baby knits which I really wanted to do this time. Um, so I've, yeah, I've designed a few set of patterns uh, for babies. Um, and I just realized I forgot her hat. Let me look if I can find it. Okay, here it is, because she's been wearing it this morning. So, <laughs> um, so I've released two kind of back to back. Um, so one that I released is the Pia Day Set, so Pia's Day Set, um, which is a, like a little cardigan with a very nice uh, stranded color work um, motif, quite easy, um, and a little bloomer, bloomer, little pair of shorts, um, don't know how you call them, bloomer, I think. Um, with a nice little eye cord. So that is size newborn. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> looks so small already. Um, so yeah, I knit that when she was uh, still in my belly, still in my tummy. Um, and uh, she wore it actually quite a few days, even though it was in May and it's like wool. Uh, it was, we had some really bad weather in June, some of the day, some of the weeks. Um, so I've got quite a few pictures of her uh, in this outfit. It was kind of a birth picture, a birth outfit. So, um, so yeah, really lovely. You can knit it as well, more for like winter. So she's got a six month size now, she's wearing now, um, that she wears with a pair of tights. So yeah, it's just like those kind of scandy old style uh, vintagey um, bloomer that I love and the little cardigan is knit um, so it's knit in the round and then you come and you do a stick uh, so here's my stick you do a stick so I've done like a crochet one here um, and then you cut your knitting and then you uh, pick up the stitches for the button bands um, and here you are and then you don't really have a lot of uh, finish inside because it's like the crochet one you could add obviously some ribbon um, but yeah <sighs> I was at the end of the pregnancy I just didn't have the <laughs> courage to do that um, but yeah so that's the Piaf Day set uh, I'll put all the link and uh, uh, that I really like um, and depending on the color that you use it can be really good for boys as well um, you know, I've seen more like darker colors and it's really, you know, mixed um, type of knitting. Um, and then the second one is even more mixed, even more like neutral, gender neutral. Uh, and it's called the Charlie's Day Set. Um, and you've got three pieces on in this one. You've got the little stripy cardigan. Um, so it's a bit creased because she wore it yesterday and um, <laughs> it was left on the chest of drawers, not 
really well folded um so it's a bit creased i'm sorry um but it's a very nice like simple stripy cardigan that is knit um well in the round but obviously the body is knit uh back and forth because you don't need to stick uh for stripes so it's just a normal uh, stripy cardigan and then with it you've got a pair of trousers um so yeah with a elastic uh, button bend um at the back and then yeah room for the diaper or nappy whatever you call it um and yeah little the ribbing uh at the end at the bottom and a nice little eye cord um that you can do or can't uh, it's the way you want really because you've got the elastic band inside so it's more like a, to decorate and then you can do the pom pom or not if you don't want to so here it is so cute <laughs> that size six months so that's what she's wearing at the moment and with it you've got a, a little bonnet um that is kind of like a bear with the pom-pom but as well you can take them off these obviously you just want like a simple bonnet uh, it's there and i've done the eye cord with contrasting color so that's the set and uh yeah she just looks so cute in it <laughs> obviously i'm not really objective she's my baby um, but that's really, really, really gender neutral as well. And they are both available from size newborn to two years old. So you do have, when you buy the pattern, you do have the possibility of doing it in several sizes. So I've got newborn, I've got newborn in both of them. Uh, the newborn one of the Charlie was um, uh, white and blue, um, kind of a Breton type. Um, and then... I've got size six months uh, and um, one of my sample knitter is knit those one I've knitted myself but I've asked one of my sample knitter to do a size uh, nine months um, and this time she's doing the top of the pia the day set uh, the cardigan with the trousers of the Charlie so it's kind of a mix of both um, which I find nice too so I'll show that to you uh, when I'll have them she's like knitting them at the moment so that was the baby baby ones and I've got more ideas for other sets like that um, but yeah that would be released more like spring next time or end of winter this this year um, so yeah what else what else what else what else it's so strange to show you everything like that um, as we are in kids um, last September or August I've released um, the Rosa Little, so it's like the little version of the Rosa cardigan. I just have a little problem on it because I need to change the buttons because one of the buttons broke. Um, so I'll show that to you in a minute. I think I've shown it to you in the last episode, that episode in May 2019. Um, I think I've shown it to you. I was probably knitting it or something or just finished it and uh, yeah but it's missing a button because the button is broken um so i need to change them and it's too small now for my little girl it was a size four years old so um starting size two years old you it becomes crop but obviously you can lengthen it if you want um but i think it starts three month old or newborn i think it's three month old sorry if i can't remember everything um, so three months to 18 months is just a normal length um, starting two it's like a crop to put on dresses um, but you can have it long if you want and it's again really simple but really nice and feminine cardigan so that's size four and then I'm currently knitting a size six years old in knitting for olive again because that's all i've been knitting at the moment <laughs> um so here it is so that's the size six so i'm on the sleeve and then i'll have the second sleeve to do um and yeah i've got little cute little buttons um and yeah it's just really really nice little cardigan to put on top of pretty dresses and uh, my little girl loves it uh, and i've got another <laughs> label here uh, this one is called uh, addict au mohair so mohair addict no longer they can so again it's a bit bigger because you've got like some sort of message um on it but yeah so i really need to finish that quickly um and i'm knitting with two different colors 
I'm knitting with the white and the mohair cloud. So it's not the same because Knitting for Philip had, had a lot of sold out colors in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so I couldn't get like a white mohair, uh, but I took the cloud one, which is a light pink. And I think that's actually really nice together. Uh, it blends really well because it's not fully white. It's not fully pink. It's just like this really nice um hollow of pink um but yeah really like it so that was the rosa little that as well is one of our best sellers so it's available in german and i'm making it translate translate uh, i send it to my translator to translate it in um the other languages so portuguese russian danish <laughs> and everything um, so yeah, so that's the Rosa Little. And then because I like to work in like kind of collection type, so when I like a stitch or a design, I like to kind of develop it in different designs. So I, a lot of the time I'm gonna do like a mummy version and then child version. Uh, it doesn't have to be mummy, it could be a lady version and a child version because it could be your niece or your nephew, um, your granddaughter, your whatever. Um, so it doesn't have to be like mummy daughter, uh, but like lady child, let's say. Um, and then sometimes I try to like develop as well, uh, like the jumper, the cardigan, because I know that's something people really like. Um, so when I released the Rosa cardigan and then the Rosa Liesel, a lot of people asked me if I could do uh, a jumper version of the Rosa, which I did. So I think it was like January or February. Or even March? Yeah, the picture was taken in January and my around my birthday and I was like quite pregnant. But I think it was released in March. Um, I released the Rosa jumper. So like kind of same, uh, so same design with uh, this time a V-neck, uh, like the cardigan, but with an eye cord, not with um, the ribbing. And then this amazing raglan uh, that I absolutely love that I've put on all my Rosa. Uh, and as well on the Margot cardigan. Uh, and then you've got like kind of a balloon sleeve as well on this one. And uh, yeah, just a two by two simple rib ribbing at the bottom, normal length um, and very feminine V-neck with the eye cord. And as I showed you earlier, uh, I added this um, uh, winter will be soft label, um, l'hiver sera doux. And this one I've knitted in um, the brand Tôt le Matin Yarn, uh, so the yarn of Lauriane. I really, really like her colors and her yarn. Uh, I used the, uh, like, I think I used the 100% Merino uh, fingering weight and then the mohair. One is called, uh, the colorway one is called Anna and the other one is called Alice. So my little girl so that's really cute um and i what i like is that it's kind of a speckled yarn well it is a speckled yarn but really like it's really small and subtle speckles because i don't really like like full-on speckle yarn i'm more the type of um just plain color uh, i find it easier to wear um but i like that type of frazzled like when you have a bit of speckles but not too much so it gives it like kind of a marble effect but not full-on speckles if you know what I mean um, so that's another one I wear a lot um, I wore it when I was pregnant not at the end of the pregnancy obviously because it would have um, kind of yeah I don't think the shape would have kept really well so um, but yeah I stopped wearing it when I was about maybe seven months pregnant or something um, and yeah I'm still wearing it a lot now and uh, yeah really nice simple a good staple wardrobe staple um, to have really and still nice to knit so I love to knit uh, stockinette stitch in the round <laughs> that's really my thing because I like to listen to podcasts or watch tv or sometimes read uh, when I knit so that's why I like to have like one part that is a bit challenging and interesting and a bit addictive and then another part that is just really really simple works really well when you have young children as well so yeah 
Um, so then another one I've released. I'm kind of like <laughs> crushing what I've uh, told you about. No, she's still asleep. Sometimes it's the neighbor's baby, so I'm like, <gasps> no, it's not mine. <laughs> Thank God. Um, a pattern that I released last winter at Christmas was this one. It's the Trescao, Trescao. It's what, hard to say like French names with English accents. Uh, Trescao jumper. So this is a free pattern, yay! Uh, my very first free pattern on Ravelry and uh, my website. Um, so the idea is like um, to have a really nice simple uh, design that is perfect for people to start knitting. Just wanted to say thank you as well for supporting my knitwear design journey for the last three years um, and I wanted to give give back to the community, to the knitting community and uh, yeah, give you a pattern that you could use, you could modify if you wanted, um, you could start knitting with, things like that. So this is a free pattern. It comes from size 80 centimeters to 158 of bust circumference. Most of my new patterns are now going to 160-ish um, centimeters, which is I think about like 5XL or something. So this one goes to 160, the laurel as well, the one with the color work. Um, so the silver leaf cardigan as well, the trescal is, um, I think another one I'm gonna show you after Steam Valley is going around at least 150 as well. So I've I really tried um, within the last couple of months to expand the range of my patterns on top of being able to you know give it in, uh, have it more in more languages um, just having it as well in more sizes so I haven't been able to like go back to old ones yet but some of the old ones were already like at least 145 150 centimeters but now I really try uh, if I can to up it as well until 160 um, so that's was one of the main thing I've done uh, this year. So yeah, Tresco jumper, uh, very simple, top down raglan with a very nice eyelet uh, raglan, uh, as well like the Raganis, um, a nice garter stitch uh, wrist and as well at the bottom. And then you've got German shirt rows at the back. So the front is a bit um, higher then the back, the, ba the back is a bit lower down, uh, which is nice. It has like a crop uh, length, uh, again, to wear it on top of dresses, it's really good. Um, dresses, high skirt, high jeans, you can lengthen it if you want. Um, this one's got like 10 centimeter of positive ease normally. Um, I'm a bit everywhere with, you know, my size currently because I'm breastfeeding. But technically it's a 10 centimeter uh, positive ease where you can do only five if you want as well. I just want it to be like really comfortable. Uh, this one was knit in collaboration with Eden Cotillion, Eden Cotillion, an English brand. Um, and it's m uh, fingering and mohair as well. So all the information about the colors and the name of the base are on the pattern. Um, so I've done it in two colors. I've done this one and then I've done the other one that is up, which is upstairs and in a kind of a green gray ish yarn and I've done it in a DK. So in the Hayton base from Eden Cutter yarn um, and it's just one uh, thread of DK uh, and I think it's merino, cashmere and nylon. So it's so nice, so soft um yeah really really nice to wear so that's another option but you could mix a fingering and a mohair or a dk um if you understand french uh, and you don't know how to knit this jumper so you can follow the pattern i've put like links and stuff it's really straightforward um but then the shop la maison tricoté has in, in Rachel has done uh, free videos in the spring uh, on how to knit this jumper so I think they speak only in French. Maybe they've got English subtitle. You'll have to have a look. Um, but I think they speak only in French, but you could like, even if you don't understand what she's talking about, you could kind of see the way she's knitting. 
and there's like several I think there's like five lessons and it's available for free on the website and their Facebook Facebook page so that's really nice uh, for people to start knitting um, so that's the Tresco jumper and then a bit later on in February um, I released the cardigan version so that's the Tresco cardigan uh, so it's really similar so it's a bit dark because it's a really dark color um, it's a really nice it doesn't look at all uh, like what you see on the camera um, it's more like a very nice uh, purple burgundy when this one looks a bit more red um, but yeah really nice colors uh, it was made in the yarn from Yarn by Simone who's a French dyer and again I was fingering and mohair uh, and yeah same same things really garter stitch at the bottom um, at the wrist at the bottom um, and then a bit of garter stitch at the neckline um, so yeah really nice I've made a, for the first time whoops for the first time um, I've made some reels this week <laughs> on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> so funny <laughs> that's actually really hard to do um yeah it took me like an hour and a half to do a 15 second video it's ridiculous <laughs> but i had a lot of fun um and on friday i posted this video where it's like five uh, uh beginner friendly knitting patterns um and i wear them with like a different outfit so you can have a look at that video you'll see it I'm wearing the Tresco on the dress, on top of the dress, and I'm wearing this one on the top of this blouse, actually, again, <laughs> that I wear all the time, um, and like uh, black jeans and some nice boots. I'm starting to hear my baby making some noise, um, so I think she's going to wake up soon, so I'm going to try to <laughs> show you the, the last ones um, that I've done. Um, so I've released that and then this year I've released a couple more like uh, summer patterns as well but I just I'm not gonna show everything to you so you're welcome to just go in my in my shop to have a look um, but one of the patterns I released as well uh, that was uh, when did I release that uh, I think it was last winter well probably winter considering it's like winter yarn so maybe January or something I've released the steam valley jumpers so this is the children version uh, and I'm gonna add a picture of um, the adult version that you can see now uh, I took the we took the pictures in Iceland the second time we went so October last year uh, and this is in Vestrahorn um, uh, this, this is the Vestrahorn mountain so one of the best place I've seen in my life I uh, really love it and we did a couple of pictures with my little girl so you've got the adult version on the pictures it's upstairs in my wardrobe so that's why I didn't want to take it down as my baby was asleep uh, but I've got the children version here in size four years old so it was knit in let loopy yarn because I said that next time so I knew Let Loopy Yarn obviously even before I went to Iceland um, the first time we went to Iceland in March we had the chance to visit uh, the Loopy uh, factory actually um, as a part of like my, what the work of my book and stuff and normally I think you have to book a tour uh, but yeah we, we've been able to visit it uh, just the three of us with my girl um, and it was really nice really interesting so I obviously knew Loopy Yarn well before uh, but I didn't have my lucky jumper um, and I said so I didn't have it for the first trip and I bought some yarn there that was way cheaper than what you can buy online here in Europe uh, well in England or France and I said I need to knit a jumper for the second time I go to Iceland the second time I'll go I'll wear my jumper at the time we didn't know yet we were going to go back in October uh, and then I started designing this jumper and then we decided we wanted to go back before like having the baby and thank god we did because now we're in the middle of a pandemic where we can't travel so I'm really glad we did it twice last year um, it was kind of a um, yeah kind of a nice luxurious trip if I can say not the trip itself because it, it wasn't luxur luxurious at all because it's quite pricey so we did it really simple but just the fact to go like twice 
in the same year, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we did. And this time I had my uh, Lopi jumper for the trip. My little girl had hers that she wore all week. It was so warm, so nice. It was just perfect. Like it's the same when we go, you know, outside in the countryside for a walk in England in like Dartmoor, um, near to where we live. Um, we just when it's a cold day, we just put our those jumpers in there. There's amazing. So that's the steam ballet. So little version or lady version. Um, it's really simple. Same. Um, the motif is made so you don't have to like carry the float on a lot of stitches. Um, and it's really big enough friendly uh, for stranded color work, especially if you use Lopi because it's scratchy. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it's a bit scratchy, but with a, I think that with a long sleeve top, it's fine. Some people don't really like it. So you could use um, substitute yarn, like for example, Gilead uh, from Derrero Natura is a good one, but there's a lot of uh, iron wet yarn you could use a worsted wet yarn um, but yeah so that was the steam valley that I really like um, and then the other one I'm going to tell you about is this shawl that I'm wearing all winter it's called the blossom shawl um, and I'll try to show it to you I'll, I'll add a picture right now to show you how it is on the picture because it's quite big and yeah so here it is it's a nice shawl with a, a really nice um, lace pattern. So I released the Blossom Cardigan, hmm, uh, I think it was about March 2019 or something. And I worked on this shawl after. Uh, I got the yarn from Moelle View Yarn, uh, Paula, um, at uh, EYF. She gifted me five skein of this yarn uh, because I helped her in her booth if you've been to EYF last year I was there helping her so I've, as I was doing it for free just you know um, for fun and stuff and because I had uh, a pattern that was released with her yarn I just said if you want me to help I'll be happy to do it so I've done it and uh, yeah she gifted me uh, those skeins of British Aran um, from her from her yarn um, and um, there was no like she never said like you need to do a design in the yarn or anything at all she just said like this is just as a thank you um, and uh, yeah but I just wanted to do something with it so I created this shawl yeah she's chatting <laughs> um, cre I created this blossom shawl um, that uses four skeins and I just wear it non-stop all winter like it's just yeah non-stop non-stop yeah it's really nice uh, it's quite easy to make as well it's long because you've got all this lace but it's not too hard um, the lace is like you know um, knitted together yarn over SSK things like that so it's not too difficult um, I just wear it all the time I've been wearing it all winter um, last year all this yeah start of winter I'm wearing it every day um, it's just really nice um, and yeah it's knit in size 4.5 I think millimeter needles as well so it grows like really quickly so that's the blossom shawl and then last year I released as well the blossom jumper again it's upstairs in my bedroom so I didn't take it uh, downstairs but I'm gonna put you a picture right now um, and the jumper was knit in iron weight yarn as well um, and it was in La Bien Aimée yarn this time uh, so the iron, I can't remember the name of the base now um, but again all the info are on the pattern page and uh, yeah it's a really um, like nice um, lacy jumper uh, with drop shoulder sleeves um, that I wear quite often as well, like all my knitwear almost, so that's nice. Um, so yeah, that kind of um, went into the Blossom collection after the cardigan, uh, the shawl and then the jumper. So again, that's often the way I, I work. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, as I said, I had a couple more, but it's, yeah, I think the podcast is long enough. Um, so yeah, I hope you liked uh, this podcast with all the news, all the pattern I've been showing you. Um, really, really sorry again. It took me so long to record a new podcast. I really need to try 
that every time I do a French one, I need to do the English one. But yeah, because I've got the baby, it's not always easy. And it's just, I was just exhausted being pregnant, really. So, um, so yeah, so I was like, I'm doing the French one. I always, that's the thing. I always start with the French one. And then I'm like, I'm going to do the English one. But by the time I've done the French, I'm like, oh, I'm just so tired. Or now the baby's waking up. Or So this time I said, you know what? I'm going to start with the English. So then I'll have to do the French because I know that if I don't do the French, um, you know, French, a lot of French people don't speak English either. So, so they're going to ask for it. So I'll have to do both. <laughs> So I think I'll do that now. So thank you for listening to me for, for quite a while. I don't know how long the video is going to be like. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, don't hesitate to like leave me a comment um, to, tell you, to tell me what you think about everything I've been speaking about. Um, and yeah, and just um, to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Um, don't hesitate to go see our vlog in Iceland as well if you're interested. And just um, if you want more like day-to-day -day news, I recommend you to just follow me on Instagram. I think it's <laughs> it's going to be easier on top of the YouTube video. So thank you for listening. I wish you a very nice week and uh, check to you later.